Okay, so I just want to talk about the baby warehouse here. We'll call it just for now because I don't really know what I'm going to call this. But this is the one in the middle. And I'll just show you a picture of the prototype. Okay, so it's looking at it sort of like this kind of angle. But it's quite heavily compressed, obviously, right? Um, so there's the three buildings, and this one I decided to compress on because there's really no doors on it. So I thought, why should I sacrifice, you know, the the brewery or the warehouse, the functional one that will be served as an industry, try to keep those ones as close to the prototype. And then this one, which was just as almost as long as the brewery, uh, had to be the one to shrink down to fit the 10-foot space or so. So you can see here, this is the footing here, and then I left a little bit of a reveal along the edge here that sits already down into the pavement on the parking lot, which I've already laid in with one eighth balsa wood and some plaster or texture paste. And then I've lined this bottom with plastic. Uh, in this case, this is 80 thou plastic. And then I'm gonna do the same similar slabs, but I'm just gonna have one sheet here and then maybe two here just to break this up. And then there'll be a door here. I'm gonna add a, add a door right here. Uh, a little bit lower than the platform because there are no platforms on this particular one. But what I'm going to do here first, well, next is, so this is the roof. Uh, I didn't uh, cover that. I was going to cover that with masonite, like quarter inch or one eighth masonite, but I didn't do it for some reason. So I'm going to use it with, do it with plastic. I got this scrap piece here. And what I did was, is I roughed it up with some 60 grit, right? You know how I talked about that. Rough it up good, give it some tooth. So when you CA it or use solvent it really bites so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to lay this down like this and then i'm going to glue put a heavy bead of ca along the edge i've already sealed this with varathane all right i seal all my plywood this is three eighths plywood seven ply so it's bulletproof right it's not going to warp it's not going to, this will never warp like if you keep it in the house it'll probably a hundred years from now it'll still because it's pinned and glued too so 100 years from now or 50 years, you know, whatever, um, you know, this is going to be still here. Okay, so you just witnessed how easy that was, right? Just scribe and snap. It's the beauty of styrene plastic working with it. And once again, like over wood, like I know, like you don't have to do this, you know, or people build out of, you know, uh, mat board, wood, just wood, foam, you know, you can do whatever you want. Uh, but. When I build a model, I want to make sure it lasts. If I want to hand it down to a family member or when I used to sell them, they had to be built like this. It's just like the client would never pay the money they did for me. They had to be like an heirloom. They had to last. So because they're going into collections. Right. But anyway, uh, why not? Right. Like um, if you're going to focus in on a nice little shelf layout, and you want it to be a long project and you want it to, to hold value and mean something to not only you, but maybe your family, you know, it's probably a good idea, right? Okay, so here's the roof, see, nice, eh? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sheet the front of this now. And then when I get the sheet, like the plastic is gonna come up a little ways like this. Okay, like I'm gonna lay some slabs on. 
like that or to the corner there. I'll probably use a full piece there, maybe. Well, I'll just have a look at that. But uh, And then when I'm going to have a little bit of the front facade come up a ways like it is on the prototype. And then I'm going to CA the panels on, but then I'm going to weld this top seam with solvent all around the whole front of it. I'm going to weld it with solvent, okay? Okay, so um, we're going to put this panel on here, but before I do, we're going to use the off cut for here. Or, like, I'm going to cut that off later, and I'm going to use that for this return right here, because I got a piece here for the front. Okay, so I just want to touch on something. Uh, remember how I talked about with the brewery about run out? Like when you line up panels, you're bound to run out. Like here, I'll exaggerate. Like the panel is flush here, but then it goes like this, right? Not that much, but you know what I mean? Um, and the panel doesn't quite line up. Like there, when it's flush to this bottom footing here, like, like it doesn't see it's tight here and loose here. Flip the panel over, okay? Like do that with all your panels, like as you're laying them up and you'll surprise yourself, like they'll line up. And once again, don't worry about the top. Because we'll board sand that later, flush, right? So that looks really nice. Look at that seam, isn't that nice? Okay, so that's how what we'll do is we'll we'll go with that then, and then I guess I can I'll just run a line later and cut that off and then cap this end. I'll just let that overhang for now. Uh, you can pre-cut it if you want, but sometimes I like to let leave it and do it later so I can get it more accurate. I can't believe how fast this is going together. Like once the wooden substructure is built, man, these warehouses, they go together fast. You just take the time to build a nice wooden structure just from a napkin drawing, from a photo. Just think in squares, keep it simple. You know, it's all the details and doors that you put in. I mean, the, the third warehouse, you know, it's well we'll see where i'll go with that with detail because it's a long span but i might improvise a little bit with that but um uh, just a few doors and platforms will do it you know for the most part with a lot of weathering you know later like in the paint phase okay so i want to get some cement in there Somebody also mentioned about what about the finish, you know, on the plastic when the glue dries? It all disappears if you don't craze it too much. You just capillary in. It evaporates. It leaves a sh uh, shiny glaze, but it's going to get painted anyway, right? You don't even really need it there. Okay, so what I did was I just took a little bit of right angle. Uh, in this case, I had some kicking around here, 292. Um, so I just, there's a little bit of a run out on the top here. I wanted a nice tight seam here. Like, I don't like loose ends like that. I like it to be all tight and, you know, that'll beef up this whole facade over this wood even more. It'll, like I said, it'll last in 50 years. Now it'll last 100. <laughs> But anyway, uh, the more tight and uh, seamless you make it, the better the model because it doesn't get to move as much. Like the wood will move, but the whole plastic will move together with it or expand and retract, which is kind of probably, um, you know, to the advantage of, of uh, reducing any kind of cracking or, you know, seam popping or whatever. But, you know, if you're in climate control, you, you shouldn't have to worry about that. Okay, so I got the off cut from the other side that I cut from here and I'm going to slide it right in here like this. I mean, I don't really like the fact that there's a gap here, but it's okay though because it's going to be CA'd to uh, the 3 8 
side here nice and solid. Then I'll skin with a tab back here the sheet and solvent. I'll weld the bottom panel to that footing piece and then with right angle and solvent up here. So it should be okay. Okay, so she's all skinned up, but I forgot to do something, didn't I? Can you see what I did wrong? I'll give you a clue to the photograph. See right here? This is, there's a blue band here, right? It looks like a, a piece of trim there, but actually upon closer inspection of the real photographs, since they're very high resolution, and like I mentioned earlier, if you take raw images, you can zoom in as to your heart's content and they won't, you know, lose focus or pixelate, but that's a, a groove, like those are slabs. Those are, are uh, add-on slabs to the top of this wall, so. So what I'm going to do there is, is I'm going to probably scribe a line I'll measure it and then I'll just cut a little groove in there and just come down the other side There it is. Okay, so when you got your line cut, right, you get your little V. It's not going to be perfect, but if you keep those two lines to the outside of the shoulder of the tape, it'll be fine. Now you take the, the point of the knife here, and you just put it in like this, and you drag it. Okay. See the little, and if you do this carefully, you get a beautiful V grave, V engravement. Okay, so there's the panel line there, engraved in. Okay, so this is all uh, pretty much an evening's work. I started after dinner and um, 
you know, th things go along pretty good when you get alone for three or four hours, right? And I'm uh, pretty happy with that now, and it's all skinned up. I'm going to add a, add a door right here. Usually I scribe the door profile and then I just drill relief holes and then use my number 18 chisel blade to pop out the slab. Because normally I'm not sure where the door is going to go when I lay the panels up. I like to look at it on the, on the layout first and see compositionally where the door would go nice like I like to have room for a couple of trash bins back here there'll be three over here and then I'm not sure I could add a landing bay here just for a truck All right dust Let's see what dusty says there should be a uh, landing bay right here dust right here hmm? doesn't matter So that's what I'll do, is I'll just join all these holes up and then it'll be nice and easy to pop that door plug out of there. Okay. 